So what's your favorite part about this job? I think I know the answer, but. Honestly, I like getting to be bossy. Um, <laughs> I love... Okay, I don't know the answer. Yeah, no, surprise. Um... <laughs> a surprise twist. You know, I, there are a lot of people who work in the wedding industry who are like, I just love love so much. And of course I do. You know, love is a many splendored thing. It lifts us up where we belong. <laughs> All you need is love, right? But but I am far more um, fascinated by the dynamics that go into weddings than I am by just this concept of love looks so different in all the ways, right? Um, and frankly, I am a type A control freak. And this lets me exercise that in a way that is healthy and does not frustrate my family and friends. Um, I can, I can uh, turn the power of my sheer intimidating tenacity on the lives of other people. And they are relieved that it is not directed at them in that moment. <laughs> so are you going to loosen the reins for your own wedding? Or what oh, are you going to yeah. do? I'm not a my wedding. Are you kidding me? I, <laughs> I have, so, so one of the first things I did when uh, we got engaged was other than setting a date and picking a venue, which PSA from the wedding industry to the world at large, unless you have a venue, you don't have a date. One more time. <laughs> Unless you have a venue, you don't have a date because there are people in this world who are like, oh, we're getting married September 16th and it's going to be beautiful. And I'm like, wow, where are you getting married? And you're like, oh, well, we don't have a venue. We're still <sighs> looking for one. No, that's not how this works. Yeah. Unless you sign a contract and put down a deposit with a venue, you do not have that date. Um, you just don't. So, and I, and I see this constantly, you know, it's there, there is a specific flow chart that you really should go in order of when you are planning a wedding, simply for logistical reasons alone. Step one, figure out your budget. Step two, figure out your guest list size. Step three, find a venue, put a deposit down, and then you have a date, which is step four. But anyway, I digress. Um, so, Wait, where was I? What was the question? No, yeah. So I, I'm looking. so for my own wedding, I actually started looking for someone to do what I do for other people for my wedding, and I couldn't find anyone because there are plenty of people who plan weddings. There are plenty of people who do day of or month of coordination, which is part of what I do, but I couldn't find anyone whose priority was like being a wedding teammate for the couple, which is really how I approach it. I approach it as like your good friend who likes you and wants to help you and also happens to have a ton of experience doing the thing that you're now doing. Because I think there's just such an unfair burden that's placed primarily on women who get engaged and they can be engaged to men or engaged to women or engaged to somebody who's non-binary. But if you identify as female or are identified as female, there is a huge burden placed on you to instantly become a professional event and wedding planner, right? Like overnight, the ring goes on your finger and boom, you must be knowledgeable about different styles of taffeta, right? <laughs> oh, it, it's, it's terrifying, frankly, for a lot of people. And there's so much pressure that comes with it. So for my wedding, I actively looked for someone who has my approach to weddings and I could not find someone, um, which led to a lot of moments of stress uh, throughout the last eh, 14 months of planning our wedding. Um, and I was like, I just, I just wish I could hire myself, but I can't do that. So here we go. Um, and I have many, many friends who are in the wedding industry, right? But I want them to be there in a guest capacity. So what I've actually done is I've kind of um, taken different components of things that I would normally do. And at points when individual friends um, are not responsible for something, I've put them in charge of a specific task. So for example, um, I, my, my best friend from college just so happens to be a Presbyterian minister. Um, she's doing our ceremony, so she's officiating. So I'm letting her run the rehearsal. Um, I am letting her run obviously the ceremony, like she's literally in charge, but she's in charge of all of the components around that. And then when her job is done, um, you know, her, her big show is done. I'm having her organize a specific set of items that need to move from one place to another. So I guess I've kind of, I have managed my own wedding, but all on paper and 
come the day before or two days before the wedding. I wash my hands of it. It goes out into the universe and it is what it is. And we'll roll with it. <laughs> Very nice. How hard, how hard has it been for you to take your hands off the wheel uh, and sort of well, give this up to other so people? So full disclosure. But- yes, you're giving it up to... <laughs> I mean, yes, you're giving it up to friends who you trust implicitly, I <laughs> oh, hope. Oh, yeah, absolutely, but, absolutely. But, but there's still an element of, all right, we're going to see what happens here. Um, <laughs> well, so so two things. First of all, my hands technically... Not to them. add to your anxiety. <laughs> oh, but... No, this is actually really good for me to articulate because it's helpful to 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 like talk through it frankly so thanks guys thanks for being here that's why we brought you here today yeah therapy session i appreciate it um (laughs) but i actually have found myself um reminding myself of things that i've said to clients and i have one client in particular who i've been working with for the last six months and their wedding isn't until december 2019 and she's wonderful like she was a complete stranger from the internet who um, you know, just cold emailed me from my website. And now she and I are just, we are such good friends. We get along so well. She is an absolute delight. And there have been moments where if I've posted something on my Instagram story, she'll be like, okay, Caroline, you're the voice in my head. So I'm going to tell you what you'd say in this situation. And it's so helpful um, where she'll remind me of something that I have said to her in the process. And the biggest thing that I tell all of my couples, but especially people who are stressed out about the details of everything. The only thing that matters is that at the end of the day, you end up married. And it's true. It's I, I just refocus on that. And I'm like, look, I've got a wedding dress. I've got a marriage license. And as long as Julia shows up to perform the ceremony, and presumably, you know, Joel shows up and agrees to be my husband, we're good. 